Warm spring air never intoxicated Catherine Ross like it did that day. I guess it's true what they say, things feel very different when you're finally free, the woman thought, smiling. The gentle rays of the sun rested on her cheeks, leaving her skin with an incomparable feeling of warmth and tenderness. Having served her sentence in the state county prison, Catherine Ross was incredibly happy to leave its gloomy, impregnable walls behind her. Of course, even the guards of the woman's block couldn't call this nice woman a criminal, and they'd seen a lot during their time at the correctional facility. They knew that Catherine didn't deserve her sentence, but took the blame for her only son, trying to shield him from a much harsher punishment. The fact was that Brandon Ross had a reputation as a rather unpleasant person who could easily break the law in order to achieve his goals. Having opened a shell company, he used it to do all kinds of stuff, except for making money legally. Of course, a life full of crime couldn't lead him to do anything good, and eventually, Brandon crossed the line. Having deceived his investors and partners, the con man went on the run. However, he soon asked his mother to help him out with some documents. Mrs. Ross never considered herself an expert in tax law, and therefore she trusted her son and signed all the documents without a shadow of a doubt. Two days later, employees of the tax service showed up at the company's office. Since the documents they found during the search pointed to Catherine Ross, the woman, quite expectedly, ended up being investigated. It was at that point that it turned out that her beloved son had framed her mother in order to avoid getting persecuted himself. Even the jury was shocked by the appalling case and thus did their best to give the woman as lenient a sentence as possible. Brandon's plan worked out perfectly. The devious con man knew that his mother was unlikely to get a harsh sentence and thus wouldn't have to spend a long time in prison. However, some might argue that five years in a state county jail, especially for an innocent woman, is actually a rather long time. Fortunately, the woman's old age and her good behavior made it possible for her to get early parole. Thus, Mrs. Ross ended up serving only half of her sentence. But the time spent in prison left an indelible mark on her soul. Catherine Ross could no longer trust her son, who had treated her so cruelly. During her time in prison, Brandon only came to visit her once, and even then, he only did it to get her to sign more documents. Mrs. Ross knew that her son got his hands on her house and was now its rightful owner. On the one hand, it was actually good, because the old woman realized that she wouldn't need to bother writing up a will anymore. As the woman was leaving prison, she was confident that she would soon be back in her own home. Thinking about it made Catherine smile. The woman reminded herself that her life was definitely going to change for the better now. Since Mrs. Ross was released a day early, she wasn't upset that Brandon didn't come to pick her up. It's alright, I can get home on my own. Why even bother Brandon with such things? The woman thought. Coming up with various excuses for Brandon in her mind, the woman didn't allow the thought that her son could simply betray her. Even when the other prisoners tried to point out the obvious problems in her son's behavior, Catherine simply refused to hear them. Being a loving mother, she was 100% sure that Brandon was a good person and thus found it in her heart to forgive him, especially since he was her only son. When the bus stopped by her house, Mrs. Ross couldn't help but rejoice over the fact that the trip was so quick. Well, I'm almost home, the woman thought with a smile. The old woman saw the painfully familiar street and her heart started jumping out of her chest. However, when Mrs. Ross approached her house, she almost immediately saw that there were new blinds on the windows, which were closed for some reason. Moreover, the front door was also new, and she knew that Brandon could hardly change it himself. What's going on here? Did Brandon decide to renovate the house? The woman thought. At that moment, she suddenly realized that something strange had happened, that something had changed. Still feeling agitated, Mrs. Ross pulled herself together and knocked gently on the door. There was no response at first. Why won't my son let me into the house? Maybe he's not even there? The woman thought anxiously. Fortunately, about five minutes later, she heard someone's shuffling footsteps coming from the other side of the door and relaxed visibly. But when the door finally opened, Mrs. Ross saw a middle-aged man dressed in casual clothes standing in front of her. Hello, ma'am. 
How can I help you? The man asked politely. Catherine Ross was so surprised that she didn't even immediately find the words to respond. This used to be my house, Mrs. Ross muttered timidly. The man's face showed genuine astonishment. What do you mean this used to be your house? I bought this house from a single man a month ago. I can show you all the documents if you'd like. They're all in order. We did everything by the book, the man said. At that moment, Mrs. Ross nearly passed out. The woman's mind went dizzy, and she even had to lean on the wall in order not to collapse. As soon as she got the news that her son sold her house, Mrs. Ross felt like her life had completely fallen apart. What's wrong? Are, are you sick? Should I call an ambulance? The new owner of the house asked anxiously. Mrs. Ross only shook her head and waved her hand in response. No thanks, I don't need an ambulance. Just give me a second to get my bearings and I'll be fine. The old woman muttered. However, the woman knew all too well that nothing would be fine anymore since she was basically left homeless. All this time, she defended Brandon and tried to justify him. But instead of waiting for his mother to get out of prison, the man sold her house and simply disappeared from her life. Fortunately, the new owner of the house turned out to be a decent man. He took the old woman by the hand and led her inside the house. You're not going anywhere in that state. Please take a seat. I'll make you some coffee, the man said, trying to sound as soft as possible. As it turned out a little later, the new owner of the house was Sean Parker. According to Sean, he was engaged in the construction business and at his own company, which he founded himself. Since he grew up at an orphanage, Sean knew the value of money very well. That was why he set himself the goal of achieving financial independence and becoming a respected member of society. The young man didn't have a family of his own yet, which was expected by his heavy workload and all kinds of problems in his life besides the business. Having taken a look around the house, Mrs. Ross immediately noted the absence of a woman's touch, which manifested itself in a layer of dust on the window seals, dried flowers, and huge bags of trash in the hallway. The old woman understood that it was hard for the man, busy with work, to keep the house in order, especially since he probably never had time to clean it. As if reading Catherine Ross's mind, Sean gently touched her hand and asked, Tell me, ma'am, how would you feel about becoming a housekeeper or a maid in my house? I can pay you and you'll get to live here for as long as you need. The offer voiced by the new owner of the house took Mrs. Ross by surprise. The last thing she expected to hear was this incredibly generous proposal. If the woman had another option in her life, she would have probably refused to do it. But since her only son had left Mrs. Ross virtually homeless, she didn't really have a choice but to accept the rather strange offer. I'd like to take you up on your offer, but you don't need to pay me. Just let me live in this house, please, and I'll take care of everything else, the old woman added. Sean's face instantly lit up with a sweet smile. For some inexplicable reason, the young businessman felt a strange sympathy for this sweet old woman who found herself in such an unenviable situation through the fault of her own son. Ever since then, Sean and Mrs. Ross began to live together. Since she wasn't at home for most of the day, Catherine Ross was left to her own devices. First of all, the old woman took up cleaning and made the house literally shine with cleanliness and freshness in a relatively short time. Then Mrs. Ross moved to the kitchen, where she devoted herself entirely to cooking. She'd always loved cooking, and therefore she often baked pies, buns, and all kinds of other delicacies. Now, when the man returned home from work, there was always a delicious dinner waiting for him, as well as the pleasant company of the sweet old woman who was always ready to listen to him and help with advice. Meanwhile, Sean couldn't help but think that he would really love to have her for a mother. Of course, if he hadn't grown up at an orphanage, things could have been different. But since he couldn't change his past, the man tried not to dwell on it. It was also interesting that Mrs. Ross felt just as much sympathy for Sean as he did for her. The old woman was used to the fact that her son always gave her problems, that spending time with the mature and reasonable Sean was a very welcome and refreshing experience. Moreover, Brandon seemed to have fallen off the face of the earth after selling the house. He didn't even bother to visit his mother once or at least find out if she was doing alright. 
Time flew by, making the heroes of this amazing story grow more and more attracted to each other. Mrs. Ross started playing such an important role in Sean's life that she even began to help him with his work. Few people knew it, but the old woman used to hold a managerial position in a firm that vaguely resembled one that Sean had. Mrs. Ross was actually a very talented recruiter. Since construction work involved a large staff of workers, interviews with important employees took up a lot of Sean's time. At first, Catherine Ross simply attended the interviews and quietly gave the businessman advice. The old woman could easily determine if the person had drinking problems, if they were irresponsible, or even capable of stealing. Thanks to the help of Mrs. Ross, Sean managed to avoid incurring losses, as well as making bad decisions that have always hindered the development of his company. One day, a man came into Sean's office. The puffy face, three-day stubble, and shabby clothes of the guests involuntarily suggested that he was living very poorly. On the other hand, Sean never judged people by their appearance and therefore gave everyone an equal chance. The young businessman had a bad memory, so he didn't recognize the man who sold him the house. But it only took Mrs. Ross a couple of seconds to recognize the man as her son, Brandon. Seeing his mother, Brandon hesitated for a second and then quickly looked away, trying to avoid catching the eye of his elderly mother. Mrs. Ross knew that her son had probably long since spent the money he had got from selling her house and was now broke. Carefully looking into Brandon's eyes, the woman delivered her final verdict. We don't like this man, Sean. I don't think he belongs at our firm. Brandon turned pale and began to breathe like a fish thrown ashore. His face made it clear that he definitely didn't expect such a harsh answer from his own mother. But Mrs. Ross always considered herself a smart and far-sighted woman, and therefore she didn't want to make the same mistake again. Having disowned her own son, she decided not to sort things out with him, so as to not put Brandon in an even more awkward position. Instead, Mrs. Ross simply showed him to the door, letting him know that it was all over. It's hard to say whether Brandon learned his lesson or not, but there's no doubt that Mrs. Ross did the right thing. Instead of wasting her time on her heartless son, the old woman directed all of her warmth and affection to Sean, who became the closest person in the world to her. After the incident with Brandon, Sean Parker started calling Mrs. Ross his mom. The woman knew how much it meant to the orphan man, and therefore she tried to live up to her new role in his life. Meanwhile, Brandon wandered the world for a long time, doing all kinds of questionable things, trying to find a way to earn easy money. Eventually, the man ended up in a homeless shelter, where he met his early demise.